Hi everyone, welcome back, it's Moe K Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today we're here with a whiskey that I actually thought I'd already reviewed, but then realised I had it. And this is the Black Bull 10 year old. I really like this whiskey and I... This is one of the ones that I tried and immediately fell in love with without knowing anything about it. I don't really have a personal connection to the brand or the story of it. And it's just, yeah, I just tried it and I really liked it. It just sits with my palette and it was one of the first bottles I owned because I won it in a raffle. Yeah, it is one of those whiskies that I kind of save for a, <clears throat> a special treat, like a dessert of whiskey. It is a 10 year old, so it's a blended scotch whiskey that has been matured for at least 10 years, consisting of both single grain and single malts. And it's this is a 50% ABV, retails around £30 I believe, and it's been finished for 16 months in ex rum casks from places like Jamaica, Guatemala, Guadeloupe, like a lot of different places. I think it's like five different islands and it's, um, yeah, I really like it. It's made by the team at Duncan Taylor, which are a uh, independent bottler and cask broker since I think 1938 so quite an old one but haven't really tried many of their products before except for the Blackwell series. So I've tried this one and I tried I actually have a little bit of a one called Kylo at home which is 50% single malt 50% green whiskey in the blend and also bottled at 50% and I think it also retails around £30 so it's quite a good price for them but yes Let's have a little taste. I managed to pour myself a really hefty dram of it, but I mean, I like it, so I don't really mind. <laughs> but let's start by having a little look on the nose. It's immediately quite sweet. But also a little bit murky. I think the first thing you can get is the green whiskey sweetness coming through. And then a little bit of a murky woody note, which is also quite... I would definitely say you can give vanilla notes, because it's that kind of sweet vanilla ice cream note, I, I almost. Some pineapple candy, and now almost a bit of... Um, coffee, like when you open a, a jar of ground coffee, you get a bit of that kind of murky notes. I'm also getting some brown sugar vibes and it's really interesting I spoke to this I spoke to Cody about this the other day and he said something that I thought was really interesting so he said it's always difficult with a rum cask especially with a blended whiskey because you don't know if the sweetness is coming from the rum casks or if it's coming from the green whiskey and previously I'd been very quick to say that a blended whiskey or Often when you try a rum cask, you're looking for the rum notes. It's the same with the Teeling small batch, which I would say has a rum character coming through. But then of course, is it the green whiskey sweetness that you kind of look for and you find it in the rum note or find as a rum note? So that's something definitely I'm going to be thinking about every time I try something that has the influence of green whiskey, but also the rum character. But I was, when I did the research for this video, I actually didn't know that they matured it for 16 months, which is quite a long time for a finishing period. A few, I mean, some people just do a few months. So I am interested to see how it comes through. I would like to say that I am getting that brown sugar notes, which I don't normally associate with green whiskey. It's more of that kind of vanilla ice cream, crisp sweetness. But it's, uh, yeah, quite interesting. Because it also has a more of a murky note, and it almost makes me think of the kind of grassy note you can find in a raw magricol. Um, and if there is whiskey in it from Guadeloupe, which is of course a uh, French style rum is produced there, then maybe you have something like a rum agricole, which is uh, made from the sugarcane juice instead of the molasses. So it gives that more kind of vegetal notes often. But it's, uh, I wish I knew more about the rums that was going into this. But let's have a little taste. Slanjava. Definitely has a, like you can get the 50% ABV, but I think it kind of suits the style of this. It's definitely has a bit of a bite to it. 
I, I, I enjoy that. And I mean, if I want to add water, I'm sure I could, but I also think the kind of texture you get from the EBV being higher just gives it a little bit of a, a rough edge, which I think suits the sweetness of this whiskey because it doesn't make it too just simply sweet. It gives it texture and just has something to balance it out, which makes it a little bit more complex, if you ask me. Yeah, it's a bit like a rough grain whiskey to start with. Now I'm really, really thinking about it, knowing that I'm looking for that kind of, is it, is it rum, is it grain whiskey, what's the sweetness coming from, how would I describe it? But I would say that it is a rum character coming through and it's almost like a mixture between molasses rum, which has a kind of golden brown sugar note, but also, and yeah, and also like a vegetal murkiness. But I, it feels foreign if you only think of this as being a whiskey matured in experiment casks. So I definitely think you can get the wrong character through, which I'm quite happy because I usually say to people that this is one of the whiskies that I would recommend for a rum character coming through. I don't think it's necessarily too much of a, this is a rum cask kick in the face, but it's uh, you can get the rum character coming through kind of whiskey. If that makes sense. Quite crisp and tropical with that little murky grassness on the nose now. Like it feels like a humid climate type of notes. Like a <laughs> brown sugar grass in a jungle. I still very much enjoy this whiskey. I think it's really nice. It's actually more complex than I thought that I could remember it to be. And it has more of a wood influence. Interesting, now that I did the thing that I don't always think about doing, but when I close my mouth and breathe it through my nose, I would almost guess that I've been drinking a rum and not a whiskey. I also don't want to, like it's not the sweetness, even though it is quite sweet, I think the woodiness makes it feel more robust and less sweet, which I thought that when I tried this it was just going to be like very crisp, almost like it was a green whiskey matured in a rum cask, but this is definitely more layers than that, in, in my opinion, and it has, yeah, it's more robust than I remember it to be, and it also has more of a, a bigger wood influence, so more of a wood flavour, but it doesn't dry out and it's not too spicy, which I really like. It is still quite a, I don't know, I almost, oops, let's kick that water bottle. It's almost like, I would describe it as a tiki whiskey. I don't know why, it's just that that's the image that popped up in my head. Something tropical, but a little bit woody that you could use for maybe tiki drinks. Something with pineapple and maybe some passion fruit liqueur or something like that. I've never thought of this that way before, but it's, yeah, like a tiki whiskey. <laughs> a little bit of wine gums as well now. The red ones, I think. The sweetness comes out more on the finish, I would say, as well. And I was thinking if I'm... Because I really want to review the Kylo as well, because I, I remember me as enjoying that, even though I haven't had it for several months now. And then I'll do a comparison with the 10-year-old. I know that Duncan Taylor has another kind of few expressions in this range. They have the Kylo and the x rom 10-year-old, but they also have an X-Sherry. 10 year old, they have a 12 year old I think as well. So it's um, it's just one of those little hidden brands that I don't think a lot of people talk about but when I see them I'm like oh it gets really excited because I know I like them and it's almost like 
one of those like I think if you like the Cadillac Prohibition or maybe these kind of blended whiskies or blended malts that are like a little bit like they can sit at a higher ABV but they're quite smooth and approachable and really enjoyable then I think you would really like the Black Bull 10 X Rum Cask. That was like sponge cake on the nose. Yeah, definitely, like, I think when it popped up in my head, tiki whiskey is the best way I can describe this in one word, or in two words. But, I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried any of the Black Bull whiskies? Have you tried any of the other whiskies from Duncan Taylor? I know they have a range called the Octave series, I think. So it's, um, they have a lot of, like, different things, but I've just not really managed to try any. Um, so yeah, if you have any recommendations for me, please put them in the comments below. And of course, if you have liked this video and you'd like to support the channel, if you leave a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing, I'd of course be super happy. But as well, if you would consider using my affiliate links with either Master Mall to the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All this information and of course links to my other social channels are in the description here below as always. And I want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I'm so grateful I have you guys with me on my whiskey journey. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, Scott. <laughs>